As seen previously in the Rymetrix orbital efficiency video, I had to take off the aero covers for my test on the return trip. I noticed a fair amount of scratches along the outer rim. These are apparently caused by vibrations of the cover, especially near the nubs that are along the surface. I've researched and found that some other people that have owned the covers for a couple of months have the same problem of scratching and pitting. There are 20 of these nubs that are around the outer edge of the cover. You can even see some of the wear on them. On the underside of the cover, I measured the width of this channel. It's about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch wide. I have contacted Rymetrics regarding this issue and they have responded. However, it doesn't give me a whole lot of confidence that they will offer a solution. Until then, I am going to test a possible fix for this issue. Before I show this, I need to prep the wheels. I clean off the wheels with a rag to remove any dirt and road debris. Here's a close-up of the area affected. Tesla OEM aero wheels can also damage the alloy wheel. The metal clips on the covers have scratched the spokes. There have been other areas on the wheel that have received smudge paint due to cover contact by the OEM aero covers. The Rymetrix covers seem to only touch the outer edge where the Tesla covers are smaller and don't reach. For the next step, I'm going to use touch of paint to repair any of the scratches or nicks that are on the outer rim of the alloy wheel. Once complete, I let it dry for two days. By the way, for the Aero wheels, the Duplicolor Dark Shadow Gray is a great match for the Tesla wheels. Here's a close-up of the touched up wheels. It's not perfect, but from a few feet away, it looks fine. Note that these wheels have been previously repaired due to curb damage. That's why some of the edges are rough. Now let's get to the fix. Looking at the underside of the orbital, you can see the nubs that are along the outer edge. I need to get something that is about a quarter to a third of an inch wide to fit this channel and to insulate it from scratching. Looking through my local hardware store, I found something that should fit well. I purchased a rubber foam self-stick water seal the kind used on doors and windows. I chose a black color to blend in with the orbital cover. It measures 3 8 wide by 3 16 inch thick and is compressible to 1 16 of an inch thick. It comes in a roll 10 feet long. The foam is sticky on one side with a backing plastic on the smooth side. First, I clean off the inside of the orbital aero cover edge with isopropyl alcohol. It's always a good idea to do this to maximize adhesion. At this point, I cut off a two inch length of the foam to do a test fit. I then remove the section of protective plastic from the foam, and then I stick it down along the outside of the cap. I place it just inside the edge as seen here. And then I press down to secure the adhesion. This is a side view to show you the thickness, which can be compressed when installed on the alloy wheel. I wanted to test some different options for installing this foam. My first version is to go all along the circumference in a continuous loop. I had to place a couple pieces to fit in with the test strip. Then, when you get to the end, cut the insulation. 
Now the foam insulation goes all around the orbital. Since I had the original wheel cap kit installed, I had to remove the nut covers and the center cap with a suction cup. Now install the cover on the wheel as usual. And then insert the center cap. I felt around the outer edge of the cap and didn't see any issues with the cover having the foam insulation installed. This is the second version of this fix to show. As before, clean the outer edge with isopropyl alcohol. Cut the foam insulation into one inch sections. I then place them over the 20 nubs that are along the outer edge, press down firmly, continue all around the cover until complete. Remove the wheel cover kit and then the center cap with the suction cup. Line up the orbital cover with the valve stem and press it on the alloy wheel. And finally, insert the locking center cap. I will check this wheel and compare it to the first one to see if using less foam makes any difference in protection. Finally, I will use even less foam insulation than the last version. I will use about a quarter inch of foam insulation to cover the 20 nubs that are causing the scratching. Place them just like this as in the previous cover. My theory is just the nubs need to be covered and just the bare minimum of foam should do the job. And now that it's finished, as before, remove the wheel kit and install the orbital arrow cover. By the way, a full 10 foot roll will allow four wheel covers to be protected if you use about an inch and a half for each of the 20 nubs. Using the first method of covering the entire arrow cap would require two entire rolls of insulation. Hopefully this inexpensive $2 fix will eliminate sand and the nubs from rubbing on the alloy wheels painted surface. I will check in a few weeks to see how successful this method is. See the video description for links to the foam weather seal and the touch up paint. Hopefully there will be a fix from Rymetrix to address this issue. But in the meantime, my solution should work and I'll report back after I get the results. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.